In Creole Parametric, you can simulate a scotch yoke, which is a mechanism that converts rotational motion into linear motion or the other way around. And I am continuing on looking at different mechanisms from the fabulous YouTube video, 20 Mechanical Principles in a Useless Lego Machine. Check it out. So again, with the scotch yoke, you can simulate that with as few as two components. And let's take a look at how to create the assembly. I'm going to stop my playback and then close the dialog box. Let's take a look at the parts that I am going to use. I will open up the rotational component first. No, I am not going to save my playback. And so this is a very simple part. I just did it with two extrudes that has a crank pin. And the crank pin is at a certain diameter or radius. You want to make sure that you know what that diameter or radius is. Let's go back to the assembly and take a look at the part with linear motion. And so this is just a part with a slot. And the length of the slot corresponds to the diameter of the crank pin. And also in this part, I do have a datum point that I've created. I'm going to use that for some different measures later on. So let's start off our assembly. I'll go to File, New, Assembly. I will call this my Scotch Yoke. And hit the Enter key. And so I am using my default template. Let me turn on my datum plane display. Since I'm only simulating this with a couple of components, I'm going to create some datum axes in order to mount my mechanism components. So let's create a datum axis at the intersection of the right datum plane. I'll hold down the control key and select the top datum plane. I'll go to the properties tab. And this is going to be for my rotational axis, I'll call it rotational axis. And then click the OK button. Let's turn on the axis display. And now let's create a second one for the translational motion for the slider. So I'll create a, another axis. And this one will be at the intersection of ASM top. And hold down the control key and select ASM front. And let's rename this to my linear axis and hit the enter key so it takes the name and then click the OK button. Now let's bring in our first component. In this particular assembly, I'm going to have the rotational component drive the translational component, but scotch yokes can work both ways. So let's hit the assemble icon and I'm going to grab the rotational component. And for this one, I'm going to change this to a pin connection. And for the pin connection, I will use, let me try to get this axis, this axis, and then let me grab that other axis that I created. And then to eliminate translation, I will select this flat planar surface and then my assembly datum plane. And right now they're coincident. I'm actually going to throw in a little bit of an offset. Let's offset this. Eh, just a value of 6 is good for my model. Let me flip that direction. Oh, that's not the flip that I wanted. Let me make sure that it's, I just want it into the Z direction 6 that way. Okay, so there I have it. The actual distance doesn't matter, but just for visual purposes, I am positioning it there. So that is the rotational component. Let's assemble the one that will translate. And for this one, it will be a slider connection. So let's choose slider. And for this one, I will grab this datum axis and then the axis going down the middle of the part. And then to eliminate rotation, let's use ASM front and the datum plane called front from the part. I could use one of the flat planar surfaces. It really doesn't matter. All right, so that is good. Let's hit the check mark over here. And let me turn off some of my different datums. I don't think I need the axes. I don't think I need my planes for the moment. And right now, my yoke is pretty far away from the crank pin. Let's use the drag button in order to grab this and move it a little closer. I'm going to leave it a little offset so you can see how the positions adjust. Oh yeah, one other thing is I just want to make sure that I take a snapshot when this part is at zero degrees. So let me edit definition of that real quick. 
I'm just creating a snapshot so that I can make sure that uh, my analysis will start from that location because that way I don't want my graphs to be offset by some angular value. So anyhow, just to define a zero location, I'll just use what ASM right? Yeah, let's use the assembly plane called right and I'll use the plane called right from that part and right now they're zero degrees apart. I don't need to enable a regeneration value. I just wanted to make sure that this was at zero degrees. And now if I go to the drag components, I can create a snapshot. Let's rename that to call it start. And then click OK and close out of there. All right. So when I was thinking about how to simulate this at first, when I looked at it, I thought, OK, yeah, I'll have a pin connection and a slider connection and then a slot follower connection so that a point on the crankshaft would end up translating up and down inside of the yoke of the component that translates inside of the slot that translates. But then I realized, oh no, that's actually going to be a little weird. I'm going to use a cam connection instead. So let's go to Applications, Mechanism, and then here we have the cam command. And so for my cam follower, for cam1, I'm going to pick the two cylindrical surfaces of the crank pin using the control key and then I'll click OK. So those are my surfaces for cam 1. For cam 2, I will select this surface and let me query select this surface and then query select that surface and then control and select this surface. And by the way, if you're not familiar with query select, that is just tapping the right mouse button. So the next selection reference behind your mouse is the one that pre-highlights and then you can click on it with the left mouse button. So let's click OK here and then click OK out of here and the component adjusts the location. You can see the symbol in the graphics area indicating the cam location. If you ever feel that your screen is getting too cluttered with these different objects, all you have to do is go to the mechanism display and you can say, hey, I don't want to see any different cams or maybe my servo motors or any different joints in here. But this is simple enough. I'm going to leave all of them displayed. So now that we have everything connected, let's throw in a motor. And me personally, I prefer to select my joint axis and then use the motor command from the mini toolbar. And I'm going to drive the angular velocity and let's go to profile details. And I just want to graph one second of this motion. So I'm going to have the coefficient be 360 degrees per second, just so that my graph looks nice when I generate the measures for how the points move. So let's hit the check mark. And now to test the motion, we can create an analysis. I click on analyses in the mechanism tree and then use the new icon from the mini toolbar and let's change this to a kinematic analysis. I like the true kinematic solver and this is just going to run for one second and I'm going to crank up the frame rate because I just want the graphs to come out really nice and lately I've been into using powers of two for my frame rates and that's good. Let me use my snapshot. And if I go to the motors tab, you can see that my single motor is going to run the entire time. Let's hit the run button. And for some reason, I prefer it going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Let's adjust that motor. I will go to my motor in the mechanism tree, edit definition. Let's flip the direction and then hit the check mark. Now let's try running it again. I will select it and hit the run icon. Yes, let's overwrite. And so again, you can see that it makes one rotational motion and translates our yoke component. So now let's create some measures so we can see how the translational position velocity and acceleration change. I have my datum point visible. I'm also going to turn on my coordinate system display. And let me hide the coordinate systems from the components. Oh, that one is hidden. Let me just go to this over here. Yeah, my datums are not hidden in this one. I just want to make sure that I'm picking the 
assembly default coordinate system when I create my measures. Speaking of which, let's do that. Let's create our measures. And for the first one, I will use the create new measure icon. And I'm going to be calculating the X position. And the point I will measure is my datum point PNT1, really small on there. Let me zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier for you to see. For the coordinate system reference, I'm just manually picking my assembly default coordinate system. And I'm interested in the X component at each time step. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And now let me create a, another measure. And this one will be for the velocity. And let's rename this one the X VEL for velocity. And once again, I will use the same point. And for the coordinate system, let me choose my reference coordinate system. Again, I'm interested in just the X component. And we'll do it at each time step. That's good. Let's click OK. And the last one I'm going to create is a measure for the X acceleration. And let's change the type to acceleration. For the point, let me get PNT0 once more and change my reference coordinate system. And by the way, I might not need to change the reference coordinate system. I just don't know what the world coordinate system is. It's probably the same as the default coordinate system for the assembly, but I'm just making sure. And then I will choose the X component of that, evaluate it at each time step, and then choose the OK button. So I've got my three different measures created. If I hold down the Control key and then select the result definition, we can then go to the graph icon. And there is an option to graph them separately, but I'm going to graph them all together. And OK, so something went wrong. And I know from the comments that people often like when stuff goes wrong in the videos, and then I show how to correct it. So let's go back to the measures once more. So I'll go to the measures and I'll select all three of them using the control key. This time I'm going to check the option to graph the measure separately and then select my result set and hit the graph button. And we see the results. So the bottom one for the velocity, that looks fine. That's what I expect. There's a little bit of stuff going on at the beginning there. Then we have our position. This is what I expect. That looks good but the acceleration is way off. We can see that there is a sharp change right at the beginning, and then it's really low, so it looks like there's some garbage right at the beginning. I wanna figure out how to deal with that. And I've edited this video and showed that I initially used the wrong snapshot. I created the snapshot before the components were connected with the cam connection, so I can try fixing that. Let me go to, let's see, I'm just going to select this component and then edit definition and make sure that my rotation axis shows exactly zero degrees and then hit the check mark so it's in the right place. Then I can go to the drag components icon and then select the snapshot. This icon here will allow you to update the selected snapshot to the current configuration on the screen and then click OK and close. And then I'll go to the analyses and then edit definition. And here it's using the current position, that's fine. If I wanted to, I could use the snapshot, but I know the current position has the angle at zero, so I can run it from this location. Let's hit the run button. And yes, we're going to overwrite the results. And I'll give you a hint, this is still not gonna fix the problem. Let's click the OK button. And then I'm going to go to the measures and select all three of these again. So yeah, even though I noted that the snapshot was incorrect, we're still having a big spike here. And actually the values have changed. So there's something going wrong right at the beginning. And so I took a while to think about this. And I think the problem is the fact that I started this out so that the point that I'm using for the measurement is located right at the reference coordinate system. Maybe if I'd left the world coordinate system, things would have been fine. I think because they are located in the same place that we're getting that big spike when any motion starts. So I'm going to try changing 
the initial configuration. Let's go to the first component, edit definition once more, and then go to the rotation axis. And let's start it so the crank is over here. Let's start it at a value of 90 degrees. And that is good. Let's hit the check mark. The position of the yoke updated. Let me create a snapshot. I'm not actually going to use the snapshot, but let's create a, another one. I'll hit the button and then let's rename this and I'll call this start 90 to indicate that a 90 degree angle for the start and click OK and close out of there. And now let's go to the analysis. And I'm just going to edit definition to make sure it's starting from the initial current configuration. Let's hit the run button. Yes, let's overwrite. And it goes through the single rotation. Now I will click the OK button. And we can go to the measures. And I'll select all three. And this time I'm going to try graphing all of them together. Let's select the result set and then go to the graph button. And this is what I would expect. I didn't expect that huge spike and then the acceleration looking flat. So again, we've got our acceleration in purple, our position in the cyan color, and then the velocity in blue. By the way, let me show you some editing of the graph. I'm going to click on this icon. And this will bring up the controls just like you have in MathCAD for the chart component. And let's go to trace one. I'm going to turn off the symbols. I don't want to see all those little dots in there. Let's go to the color and let's change that to a red color. I'd like the line to be a little thicker. Then let's go to the second trace and I'm going to do the same thing. Let's turn off the display of the symbols and make it a little bit thicker. Uh, even thicker than that and let's use a green color for this one I just want a little more contrast and then go to the third one again turn off the symbols I like the blue color I will just adjust the thickness and that's good and I can collapse the results let me deselect the result set so we can see our nice graph of how the position velocity and acceleration varies for the different ones. Now the position is kind of a small result over here compared to the magnitudes of the other ones. And so for that reason, you might want to graph them separately. Let's check the box, hit the graph button. We have all three results. And yeah, now you can go through the same process of selecting the traces and turning off the symbols and then changing the colors and thickness to what you want to use. And then if you select in the second area, it brings up this one. For some reason, it's collapsed a little bit, but that's okay. I can still make the changes that I want to make. And once again, turn off the symbols. And then go to the third one and go to its trace. Turn off symbols, adjust the thickness. And let's make it, where's my nice blue color? There we go. And so there I have my different results. Uh, located in here just want to deselect everything and then collapse my editing tool and so there you can see the results on their own separate graphs and it looks a little more like the kind of sine wave that you would expect seeing as they have their own x or excuse me y axis values uh, and so that's how you can see the motion of a scotch yoke and i hope you learned something by the mistakes that i made